bringing to life the magic of leprechauns. That's the work of Elizabeth Berg in her wonderful book, Looking for Leprechauns, an Ellie and Kim adventure. She intertwines the allure of the mythical creatures with the bond of friendship. Set against the backdrop of a rainy Boston day, the author's narrative captivates readers with its whimsical chase and the promise of a pot of gold, of course. We're gonna take a deep dive into the enchanting world crafted by this very talented author, where every raindrop just might hold a clue to finding those elusive creatures. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her beautiful book. Elizabeth, thanks so much for being our guest today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. This is quite a story. Um, it reminds me of a classic children's tale in many ways, especially since it involves leprechauns. Tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea for the story. You set it in Boston in a city with rich Irish heritage as well. Kind of inspiration, I would assume, for uh, leprechauns in the city. Well, it, it all started with my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my only way of communicating since I live in Canada and uh, she lives in America, in Boston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So it was the only way I could really communicate with her. And I called her on a Saturday and I just asked her at that time, she was probably around five years old. I just asked her what she was planning to do that day. And she said to me that she's going on a hike. Mm -hmm. So I said, hmm. Um, I think it's raining where you are. So I don't know if a hike should be the activity that you're going to be involved in. And she said, oh, grandma, that's the best time to go hiking because that's when the leprechauns come out into the into the woods. And they think everybody is um, staying in the house and they're out to play in the woods. So I got kind of excited and I thought, you know what? I think there's a story there. Mm -hmm. So. That's wonderful. And there is a story there. That's great. So it's great that you got inspiration from your granddaughter. And uh, she got the ball rolling talking about leprechauns. And it's wonderful that she's still so imaginative and creative that she believes in leprechauns because that's the she, best part of childhood, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, she's very creative. And even though she started, uh, like it started when she was about five years old, I made the um, the book, my audience in the book is really from ages six to nine. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons uh, I made the little girls in the story nine-year-olds is that they have to be able to be a little bit more independent. Mm -hmm. And so to use a computer, they needed to be a little bit older. Uh, to go into the woods, they needed to be a little bit older. It It was more of a safety thing. So... When you write for children, you have to make sure that the the world for them is safe as well. That you're sending out the right message. Don't go in the woods if you're four years old. It could be a problem. That's right. So nine is That's a little right. bit better. That's for sure. Well, um, tell us a little bit about the fact that this is an Ellie and Kim adventure. Kind of sounds like it's a series. Are you going to write more than one book? Yes, I think there's going to be a series. Um my my number one audience, of course, is my grandchildren. So when I finished writing the book, I first I sent them a draft. And then, of course, when I finally had got it published, I sent it uh, the book to them because they are my greatest critics mm -hmm. and my best critics, of course, and it's important. And uh, uh, when I was talking to them, and of course, they were in Boston at that time, uh, they gave me a few more ideas. Uh, particularly my granddaughter, because she is very creative and she has a totally unrestrained imagination. So uh, I've been thinking, but they just moved a month ago to San Francisco. Hmm. So I think my new setting is going to be San Francisco. And so now I have to do a little bit more research and start thinking about what kind of mischief can Ellie and Kim get into in San Francisco? 
Well, it's a very scenic city I'm between the waterfront and the trolley cars. I'm sure you're going to come up with a great tale and the hills, of course, as well. So the I, hills. Yeah. And I think there might be a little bit of magic in there, too. A Absolutely. little bit of magic might come into it as well. That is great. You know, we didn't talk about the overall story. Tell us what Looking for Leprechauns and Ellie and Kim Adventure is about. Well, um, Ellie and Kim are best friends. They live next door to each other. And um, Kim is the one that has these um, big ideas. So she knocks on the door on a rainy day and she says exactly uh, what my granddaughter said. This is a perfect day to look for leprechauns because her grandma, who was Irish, mm -hmm. uh, Grandma Shannon, uh, told her and she told her a lot of different kinds of Irish tales because she was originally from Ireland. She told um, Kim that she had once caught a leprechaun. Mm -hmm. She put it in her pocket and of course he disappeared. Uh, you cannot take your eyes off a leprechaun because he disappears. So the girls get it into their heads that they're going to go and find a leprechaun on a rainy day because that's when they come out. So they go out, but you know, they've done some research uh, which is what one has to do. And, you know, there has to be some thinking, critical thinking uh, and planning. So they did their planning and they decide to go into the woods and the woods are behind the house. And they, the woods actually are from my children's childhood. We had some woods behind our house. So it, so I kind of put in a little bit of the children's setting, my grandchildren's setting and that was Melrose Town. So they go looking for leprechauns and uh, they don't want that leprechaun to disappear. So since they're used to catching bugs and things for science projects, they take a glass jar with little air holes at the top so that if they catch a uh, leprechaun, they can put the leprechaun into the glass jar. He can breathe. He cannot escape. And they can keep their eye on him. So basically, that's the premise. But then, of course, as I was writing, I had to think about, all right, a lot of what ifs. Okay, so what if they catch that leprechaun? What are they going to do with that leprechaun? I mean, I had to put myself into the mind of the children. Like I wanted them to find a leprechaun, but at the same time, uh, I wanted not to find the leprechaun. I wanted it to be a mystery and I wanted a lot of suggestion. So anyways, they do find a lot of clues. It is a mystery. They find a silver buckle. So, I mean, it could be a leprechaun. It could be a baby buckle. I mean, right. anything's possible. Wonderful. They find a ring of mushrooms. We do find rings of mushrooms in, in the woods. Anything is possible. Is Are they magic? I don't know. The nice thing is their mom is nearby. Um, Ellie's mom, Mrs. Taylor, is nearby. And she's there just to um, oversee things. Mm -hmm. And since she can oversee, she also knows what's going on. So in the background, she can be of help. But at the same time, when you're writing a story for children, the children have to come up with the solution themselves. The adult cannot come up with a solution. So it has to be the child. So they do end up with a gold coin at the end and um, they do um, uh, bake some cookies to attract that leprechaun because how are you going to catch that leprechaun? So they bake some cookies and in the book, there's a recipe for the favorite mom's cookies. So if anybody wants to bake cookies, they'll find it in that book. And, um, and at the end, uh, there's a surprise ending. They do find the, uh, they do get a coin, but it leaves it an open-ended suggestion for the future. Wonderful. That's a great story. And I like the fact that a lot of it is suggested and not overt. I think it's great. It makes the kids keep that sense of wonder. And uh, we all want kids to yeah. do that. Have you envisioned Ellie and Kim's adventures as part of a series, perhaps on TV or a series of films, animated or live action? I'm I'm not yet that ambitious. I'm just <laughs> starting. I, I have written a few other books before, but this is something that, again, is this is my first um, like I've written picture books. 
but this is my first, if you want to call it chapter book for kids. So um, time will tell, yeah. you know, I'm working on a second book. Um, we'll see how things go. Yeah. Uh, I did have a little bit of a problem with the first one about the gold coin, because one of the uh, one of my what ifs was what kind of a gold coin would they find? And so one thing that happened, and I I think the Lord was with me when I was doing this, because I did it. I did remember that when I was in the States talking and working, you know, being with the kids, I used to collect some of the American coins because they fascinated me. And mm -hmm. one thing that fascinated me about the American coins, um, because you have so many states, is that each quarter had a different face. So I started collecting some of the quarters, you know, so you would have your Georgia peach. And then I think you had your Kentucky. There was a horse and an estate on it. So you had George Washington crossing the Delaware. So the different uh, quarters have uh, have different faces on them. Mm -hmm. While I was doing that, I also picked up some gold, um, call it gold, it's not real gold. Dollars. You do have some commemorative dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, here in Canada, we have also dollars, which we call loonies. Mm -hmm. They're not gold. They start out gold, but of course, mm -hmm. they get tarnished and they get a little bit on the brass and side. But I did find or I remembered that I had this gold coin and it just happened to be uh, James K. Polk, 1845 wow. to 1849. And that is when the leprechauns came to America. They came with the um, with the settlers who came for a better life during the potato famine. The potato yeah. famine in Ireland was in 1845. And so I came to the conclusion that maybe the leprechauns came on a boat with the settlers and the future immigrants. And that's how they got into America. And so... It just happened to fit that James K. Polk, uh, you know, coin, the commemorative coin. I have actually my little commemorative coin, which I, I've kept diligently. You know, I have to <laughs> hold on to it when I talk to kids about it because I've been doing reading. Uh, I've had some readings in the library. So I like to show them this coin, 1845 to 1849. And it, it just fit into my story. That's got, wonderful. That's wonderful. I love the details, and I'm sure kids are amazed by the coin. It's real. And they start yes, wondering if leprechauns are real as well. Yes, it is. Elizabeth Bird has written a magnificent book for children. It is called Looking for Leprechauns, an Ellie and Kim Adventure. It is a wonderful tale that intertwines mythical creatures with the bond of friendship. It is a great story that is set during a rainy day in Boston, and they have many of them. And hopefully they have many leprechauns as well. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. It's been delightful. It's been a real pleasure for me as well. And for the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.